What you doing now, Dave? Going to install the Micro Air Easy Start. What's that? That helps the AC start with uh, 30 amps. Why would you want that? Because sometimes I'm camping and all I have is 30 amps and I want to run both AC units. Okay. And with 30 amps, you can't. We are Dave and Karen from Watts on Wheels, and we sold our sticks and bricks to RV full-time now that we are retired. We travel with our heavy-duty truck Leroy, our two K&M motorcycles, our DRV Dixie, and our smart car Zippy. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell to be notified when we post a new video. So when would it be beneficial to use an easy start system for your AC units in an RV? Uh, the best benefit of, of that is for boondocking and using a generator because a lot of the generators that you have they can't handle the big surge that uh, a, a uh, AC unit will put out to start so that softens the surge and lets the generator catch back up and do what it has to do a lot of people have you know the 2500 generators they have the 3000 4000 generators that just won't handle that surge so the easy start is good for that and, and aren't your batteries charging up for the inverters as well well sometimes they have inverters some some rigs have inverters some rigs do not I guess it depends on if your fridge is on propane or right if you have a battery operated fridge well that runs normally on a small inverter mm. real small so it doesn't really yeah it still draws electricity but it's not a big big draw mm-hmm like we have a 3,000 watt inverter, and that thing pulls a lot of juice to charge the battery bank that we have. Yeah. But we have two uh, rooftop AC units that are 15,000 BTUs, and they draw, when they start up, about 21 amps each. So when we're on generator, it's easier on our generator for the easy starts to, to bring it up and get them both running. If with our generator the way we have it, Without the easy start, you have to start one AC unit and let it get going, and then go out and start the other one and try to, and hope they never both start at the same time. Is there any other time besides boondocking and using a generator that you might want an easy start? Well, yeah, for a 30, 30 amp campsite, for to get your generator, I mean, to get your AC unit going where you can have, say, your coffee pot on, your fridge is running, and hot water, heater. hot water heater's running, and and all of a sudden your AC kicks on, you don't want that big surge to trip to run you over the 30 amp max. It, it'll easy start it up for you. And that way you live pretty close to uh, normal life. In another video, I have a solution where you can be at a 30 amp campsite and uh, have both AC units running at the same time and pretty much so live like you're plugged into a 50 amp pole. But in this video, we are going to have a little lesson on 30 amp and 50 amp and get into the installation of the Easy Start. With 30 amp, you have, you're dealing with three wires. One is a ground. The other one is a neutral wire, or the return, if you want to call it that. And the other one's the hot wire. One hot. One hot, which carries the 30 amps of electricity. Mm -hmm. With a 50 amp, you have a ground, you have a neutral, you have a hot leg, and a hot leg. And in the coach, you have a, an electrical management system, MS, management systems. And when the 30 amps comes in with the one leg, hot leg, it takes, your coach is also divided up into two hot legs, coming out of the management system. So when you're on 30 amps coming into the management system, this management system breaks this 30 amps up into two 15 amps. And what it is is your air conditioners, they're running and pulling. If you have two AC units, this one will pull 15 amps, and this one will pull 15 amps. They're around 15 amps. And when these things turn on, they'll peak at 21 amps when they first turn on. So automatically, boom, it'll blow that breaker because you're exceeding your ampage. Okay. So it, like it jumps up to 21 and then kind of works back down to 15 Right. Once, 14 the, com or once the compressor starts to run and everything's running, then it, it drops back down to about 14, 15 amps. It's just calling for more power to get started, basically. Right. Right. They okay. do. 
and so I put those uh, easy starts in and what that does it takes that 21 amp surge and spreads it out over time instead of being instant okay and it's like if you watch it it'll go from from 16 to 18 to 21 you know or something like that it goes slowly so it has time for this to uh, process so if, if it's slowly going up to 21 is it still gonna blow it no because it'll drop back down once it fully gets running so it has to stay there for a little while before it actually blows it well what actually blows it is a surge a quick surge Oh, okay so if that were to go up to 21 and stay at 21 would it still be able to work on that 15 amp line no not both of them no one of them one of them would because the, the 15 or the 21 is less than 30 amps oh 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 because you still so if you oh, get oh, if I you gotcha. get two of them if you got two of them running then you got two, two 21s pulling at the same time right and then you're, you're you know, way over 42 amps and you're pop. over your 30 okay gotcha yeah. they'll both start they'll both run but after about five minutes one will shut down is that's probably because it's going over the 30 amps that that's yeah by that time the management system's saying hey you're running me at max here if you turn anything else on it trips one ac unit off including the refrigerator Microwave, microwave, refrigerator, TV, anything, anything to toaster, anything coffee to, maker, <laughs> anything that pulls more than two to three amps. It kicks one of them off. Then. It'll kick the AC off. So with 50 amps, you have two hot legs coming down from the pole, and this prong's hot, this prong's hot, this is a neutral, and that's a ground in the 50 amp pole. So what you end up is with 50 amps coming down this leg. And 50 amps coming down this leg and that goes through the management system to the bus bars in the, in the breaker box so it lights up each bus bar with 50 amps and that's the way that works it takes the management system out of it and so you have 50 amps down this leg 50 amps down that leg and that's enough to run your entire coach so you can turn both ACs on at the same time, no problem? No problem at all, no nothing, supposedly. Is there a, a readout you get on the soft start or anything? There is. There's a little readout that can tell you what, it has codes that will tell you what, what's going wrong. Today we're going to install a, an easy start AC unit into my Dometic AC unit on the roof of the RV. First thing you want to do when you start this is make sure you kill the power to this unit. And then we'll pop the top. And we want to find a location for this thing. Pop it off. And in order to put the unit right there, I have to drill a hole through here to accommodate this line. And I'm going to pull this line through this hole. Unfortunately, you got to go one lead at a time because of the size of the leads. Okay, we got the four leads through. Now we pull the rest of the cable. Our next step is to take this control panel cover off. Now we kind of have to scrape this foam back. Open this thing up. All the wires from the compressor come through this little port right here. And we have to take this out and discard it because the new cables won't fit through with that in there. And then again, we're feeding the cables one at a time. Now you can also purchase an installation kit with this thing it provides a little collet that goes in here to safeguard the wires uh, I failed to purchase that kit but I'll have to get a collet and come back up here and fix that the next step is you take the white wire from the compressor and you track that down and which one is it? it's this one right here I have and it goes to this capacitor right here the start capacitor and what you want to do is disconnect that and before you disconnect that 
get in here with a screwdriver and discharge these capacitors by touching the terminals together. If you don't, you might have a nice surprise. I'll take this white lead off right here. Grab a hold of it. Unplug it. And what we want to do here is snip this lead off like that. Then we want to strip it back about oh a half an inch or so, maybe three eighths. Like that. We want to twist that wire up. And then we take this brown lead right here from the easy start. And we hook that wire together like this. Then we want to take a they call them a bell connector or a end cap connector and you want to crush that down on there good and tight because these hold better than any wire nut on a multi-strand wire you want to take a little bit of tape and just give it to once or twice around on here just for security reasons we want to take the white wire from the easy start right here and we want to connect that to the capacitor to the lug we just removed the other white wire from and these this came with this uh, stab lock and this one also so it saves you the hassle of going out purchasing them and putting them on We want to make sure that that's down on there. Take this orange lead. Put it. There's an empty lug back here on this capacitor. I don't think I could even show it to you on the camera. There we go. Got it down on there. And then we take the uh, black wire up here from your compressor, but in this case, this wire is blue and then we track that down and it's right hooked in right here on this terminal and what we want to do is we want to take this wire off right here and there we go and then what we want to do is we want to cut this wire oh, I'll say about right there strip both ends of this one and add these two pieces to this one to the black and we'll cut it about right there all right now we'll strip it go back about a half an inch or so just like that and we'll do the same on this part I just cut off take this this and this We'll twist these three together. And we'll make sure that bell cap's down on it good. And then we'll give it a, a little squeeze. And we'll give each wire a little tug just to make sure it's in there. Go around it once or twice with electrical tape just to secure them. And then we'll take this lead that we took off the terminal and we'll put it back on it. And there we go. Now what we want to do is you have your start capacitors and this one is located way down in there that little black round tube down in there there's a white wire going to it and I want to get in there and pull that white wire off of there and then I follow the white wire back up to the run capacitor and disconnect it got that wire out then there's a red wire on the same capacitor down here 
you want to pull that off on that start capacitor. And then that comes up to this other little capacitor. And you follow the red line up to the run capacitor side. And you locate that. And you want to remove that too. And we got to find it. I think it's right here. Yep. And then your wiring is complete. Prongs in up here. And then you just work it down. And then we put the two screws back in. Also what I did is this line coming in from the start, easy start. I put a couple zip ties in along with the lines coming in from the compressor just to hold it up and clean it up. So what you do now to program the easy start is you come in, you set your uh, your AC unit to cool and the fan will come on and then after a couple minutes the compressor will kick in and then you let the compressor run for 30 seconds and shut it off and you re repeat this process five times and that should program your easy start to your AC unit. Well I got both ACs running on a 30 amp there and it, you can tell it's pulling 29 amps for the two ACs. I guess they pull about 14 amps a piece while they're running. So you'll see this light up. Oh okay. That's the fan part. Mm -hmm. And then AC 1C that's when the compressor comes on. Oh. And that, that's this is the one in the living room and this is the one in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. and, you, and then it has the windows here, 50 amp, mm -hmm. gen, as how many amps you're actually pulling. So, in conclusion, the easy start is best when you have you know a smaller generator and you only run one unit in your, or you only have one unit in your RV. So that way you can still run off the generator and have the uh, AC unit running and the other little appliances or whatever you have running alongside of it. Uh, if you have a, a larger generator like we do, we have the Honda 7000, you can run both ACs with an easy start and still have some power left over for other items to be run. But Are you glad you put the easy starts in? Yeah, yeah, for the generator, yeah, because we do, we do a lot of boondocking here and there. So yeah. In another video I have a solution where you can be at a 30 amp campsite and uh, have both AC units running at the same time and pretty much so live like you're plugged into a 50 amp pole. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video please give us a thumbs up. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below even if it's just to say hi. Don't forget to subscribe.